Welcome to the London Independent Film Festival 2022. We are so excited to be back and thank you so much for joining the panel today. This is all about short film funding. Uh, we also have some fantastic events and short films and our feature film later tonight is Frank Miller, American Genius. So it's about Frank Miller, the comic book artist. It's a documentary about him. Cool. So I want to say a huge thank you to Genesis Cinema and also to our other supporters and partners. You can find them on our leaflet and also on the leaflet you can find the program for the rest of the festival as well. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this panel. I will hand over to Mark from Genera Films. here this afternoon. My apologies again that we were running late. Totally was not our fault. It was a problem with the tube if you live in London. You know. I don't live in London, so it's more annoying. But um, that's why we're uh, As Natasha said, my name is Mark. I work with Genera Films with Christian, um, who's beside me, and Peter from Greenet, who's here as well. You might wonder why I'm the one doing the talking when I do work with Genera and not with Greenet, but I have actually crowdfunded on Greenet before, so I know something about both platforms. That's why I'm up here this afternoon. So. As I've mentioned already, Christian Parton on my left from General Films, CEO and general guru of everything General, and Peter Story from Greenlit, uh, right here, who both indie film champions either side of me, so I'm playing as well. We're some real allies of the team. So we're here today to talk about short film funding. Uh, as we know, there are just so many avenues out there for short films. They're just throwing money at short film projects. Have we have a chance to get clean? I'm kidding. That's not happening. At all. It's actually really tough and really horrible. So why we're and why both of these companies have been set up in the first place in, in response to some of the lack of options that are out there for, for filmmakers, for two very different um, ways of, of, of funding. Um, so first of all, because I'm now out of breath from doing it, I'm going to ask um, Christian first and foremost just to tell us a little bit about them and about what General does. Um, so a bit about me, I won't, I won't bore you all to uh, death uh, with the whole story, but uh, I'm a filmmaker myself, so you know I've experienced the sort of pain and, uh, and trial of trying to get a short film financed. I've made my own short films, which led to sort of generous um, birth. Um, and just the options out there, really, really difficult. You know, I think we can all agree it's, um, you know, we've got various routes, whether it be the funding bodies, whether it be, you know, crowdfunding platforms. Um, and I always just thought there's got to be uh, potentially a different um, way of doing it, or another option. So, um, and it sort of came to me that we're all very experienced with film festivals in the way they work, as we're here now, uh, which is, you know, you apply with your project and you hope to get selected if you do get screened at the festival. So, I always thought, I wonder if I put that model at the beginning of the process. So you're actually applying with your idea, similar to a film festival, you pay a submission fee, you apply with your idea, um, and then if your idea gets selected, as it would say a selection at a festival, you get the finance thing going into film. So it, it sort of fascinated me that idea of, well, we know the structure around that, and could that be possible? You know, and it's that idea of if we're all here today, we get a pint glass, and everyone puts one quid in the pint glass, and then everyone stands up and talks, pitches their idea, and we all decide, them and they get the pipe. You know, it's like really sort of primitive sort of stuff. Really, you know? So I set about sort of how do we make that work and bringing in partners and offering kit deals and post deals and other things that might help to contribute towards making a short film. And we set up in April 2017, we're still here today, um, which is good news. We've you know, we funded over 40 of our projects, um, lots of cash gone out, lots of um, prizes, lots of support. Um, and here we are. Uh, we've got a new platform, which I guess we'll talk about later. I won't really jump the gun, but we've sort of now introduced more offering for our, our members and our community. But essentially, that's, that's generally in a nutshell of, of how it works. It's a very, very simple process. It's not seven, eight months of you know, auditions and applications and back and forth. It's a really simple process. We're very hands off. We you go make the film you want to make, um, not the film you want me to make. Um, Yeah. Magic, thank you very much. And I will give everybody the chance to ask some questions in the session should you have any, but we'll read through these guys later on. But for now, I turn to the very handsome Peter Story, who's going to tell us all about Greenlit, the crowdfunding Yeah, thanks for coming on, everybody. Thanks to the Genesis, one of the cinema. 
front door is literally 200 metres in that direction, so very happy gig today. Well, no, no <laughs> dreams for me. Um, so for those of you that have that come across us, greenit.com is a crowdfunding platform, and we're just approaching our uh, third birthday, actually. Uh, April 19th, we will go on as Greenit's birthday, which is when we launched our first crowdfunding project in and so we set up with a bit of a mission and one of the problems that we encounter with as everybody in this room knows is it's very difficult to get people who are films funded you know unless you've got a trust fund unless your parents have got blue names on wikipedia it's very very difficult to build into that side. and the big crowd in the crowd in the and the incumbents are very very much geared towards they're, they're very much geared towards you know, gadgets, luggage, or tacos, and all those kind of things. So, while they all serve creatives, and you can, you know, you can go and post your film on uh, Indiegogo, or you can go on Kickstarter, they're not really optimised for it. The second thing that, that we observed was that a lot of filmmakers don't understand how to do crowdfunding. And we can extrapolate that even more broadly and say that filmmakers don't understand how to do marketing in general. Uh, you know, most, most producers of our have come from a background where they've come from creative roles or they've come from production management. Um, and you know, it, it, marketing and promotion and how it fits audience development have never really been concerns within that kind of mode of, of film school and, and education. Um, Filmmakers that have come from exhibition or distribution do do a around. So we learned very rapidly, very quickly, that what we needed to do to empower filmmakers was to start to give them those bits of business and, and to educate and to help people along their way with their campaign and to think about crowdfunding in a different way. And we get we get weeds on this, but the one I have is that crowdfunding is actually about It's about enabling your audience, engaging your audience, finding that audience. Because if you're a creative person, you've got something to say about it. And there are thousands and thousands and thousands of people out there who want to hear it. And they will like what you say, they'll engage with what you say, but disagree with what you say. They might want to it, they frightened by it. But that audience is there. So crowdfunding is the way you can find them and you can literally get them to buy into what you're doing. So it's as much about the community as, as it is about raising money. Raising money is almost like a simple thing. Get the community a bit right. Great, thank you very much. And then um, one thing I think that would help us up here at Speaking Guys this afternoon is to get a show of hands and try to an understanding of avenues you might have already tried for funding or already familiar with. So raise your hands if you've applied to the BFI for funding for a short time. Raise your hands if you have crowdfunded. Raise your hands if you're thinking about crowdfunding. You are. <laughs> and, 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 and think about it all the time. And, and raise your hands again if you are having apply for the BFI but you are considering it or another kind of national funding scheme. Well, it's great that everyone's already familiar with BFI schemes such as that and platforms like Indiegogo and Kickstarter as well. What's brilliant about these two outfits is um, how they're different from those, which is something I'd like to talk a bit about first of all. Um, as I mentioned, I have crowdfunded before with Greenlit uh, back in the early days, three years ago now, a long time ago. No, I was con, so uh, I'm going on that one really well. Um, just add some things about this. It's the fact that all the time. Make sure they hear that. Oh, yeah, so school uh, was a very early project from Mark and Mark wrote, and I it's fantastic. It's a very good general platform. Yes, it is, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so if you take nothing else away today, go for the sound of school to work, just thank you. But I have to say, and this is all with complete sincerity as well, one of the, the, the main reasons I wanted to use Green instead of Indiegogo, which I had used before for Kickstarter, was that those platforms are so enormous. I think you can be um, 
hypnotized by the numbers of people on that platform and, and some of the huge numbers of, uh, in funding that these projects have had. But it's, it's something of, of an illusion because you will ultimately still get the target you need with the work that you put in, with the community that you build. And those platforms, while you know, they work absolutely fine, which is why they are su the success that they are, they're so huge, your project is just a number to them. The difference with Green is that the team is at the end of the phone. You know, they will talk with you through your campaign and in the early days before it even goes live, make recommendations about things you can do to help yourself while running the campaign. While the mechanics to the user, who would like to support your film, are the same as they would be when you go to Kickstarter. So to the people who want to support you, they're not having to do anything different than they would had they been doing it on the Google Kickstarter. The difference is to you and your project and the support that you get, which you will not get on other platforms. Would you say that that's a fair description? It's yeah. a marvelous description. I think it is too. Yeah. And it's all completely true. So, um, yeah, I, I, um, as a filmmaker myself, I would not recommend anything that I didn't think was a worthwhile thing to filmmakers. So, as such, agreement. So, uh, and now on to Generate as well. Um, uh, I'm aware some of the the application processes for national funding schemes are um, complex, cumbersome, and can take a lot of time. It can feel like it, it's a lot of hard work for something that probably isn't really going to you know, get you anywhere. And all that time you spend on application, you could have been putting into creative works or writing or working on the project itself. So um, I would say, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the great things about um, Genera and, and one of the reasons it was made a response to this kind of process is that the application process is close to 100% I think they're going through one of the national funding schemes um, an awful lot easier um, there is no uh, creative kind of control exerted in any way shape or form you know, once the funds are start given to a filmmaker it's your film to go and make it's not a situation where we really love everything about your film can you just change this, 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 this and suddenly it's not the film that you applied for in the first place which I have heard horror stories from some schemes about that. I won't name the schemes, but I've heard them. Um, and the good thing about Genera is that if we like your film, it's because we like your film. It's not because we want to make our version of your film. It's just because it's great the way it is, and we want to see that being realized. Now for my next question, which is not escaping me in any way, is to you. And that is... One sec. Oh, no, no. Here we go. Okay. So, um, you do such a good job. This question is, there. sorry, it's basically, can, can you elaborate a bit more on how the um, funding, the application process works? Yeah. Yeah, well, Mark, Mark's put it beautifully, better than I can. Uh, I'm more of a let's chat at the bar kind of guy, and I'll talk to you individually, but I'll try and, um, I'll try and better that one yet. Yeah, um, so, yeah, the generous whole approach is very much, um, we don't want to come in and take control of your project. Um, because we're an independent company, it gives us the freedom to be able to do that and not have to check boxes or um, fund projects through other reasons than purely just because we like the project and like the talent, um, which is unfortunately the case. So because of that, we have loads of control that a lot of people don't have, which is brilliant. Um, it also means we can make the application process whatever we want it to be, which again is great, it makes life easier for people, as Mark said. It's not a kind of like huge slog where you've got to go in for months and months and updates and updates. So the way we fund is we have our rounds that open, they used to be quarterly, they now are slightly less just because of the pandemic and the rest of it. Um, but it, they are consistent, so you never, it never closes and you've got to wait six months to apply, you can always apply to general. Um, at any point in the round you can update the project, so if something happens, people might have well done this when they've sent off the application and then something has come in the week after and they're desperately trying to update that project and find it impossible. So good news is you can jump straight back on uh, and update the project. So it's basically, you, you sign up, you've got an online form, that's the first stage of, of filling out the application. Um, nice and simple. You should have all the information if you're going to go and make a film. Uh, we're not asking for any trick questions. We're just asking to hear about the project, hear about the team, hear about your idea for it, hear what you do with finance. Um, and that's it. It's uh, really 10, 15 minutes it should take to fill out that initial application. Um, from there, then we short this project where we go into much more detail where we ask for you know, all the finance structures and budgets and all the rest of it. So there's a lot of, sort of belt and braces, we call it. Um, again, because we're a private company, it's, it's risky, right, in terms of, you know, we've got to dish out money and hope that people deliver us a film. Now, the way that we've built ourselves, no one so far has taken money and never delivered us a film. That's because we have to go through these steps, but they're much less intrusive than a lot of the other methods out there. 
um, and hopefully a lot sort of filmmaker friendly, um, where you don't feel like you're being asked about whether your parents got a degree. Do you know what I mean? You're, we're actually asking you about what your film is. Um, so and I, th I feel that's really important for what we want to do. And like I said, we have the freedom to do that, which other people aren't, aren't afforded if they're controlled by a public fund. Um, Obviously, one thing to say is that Genera is a paid platform. You do have to pay to apply. It's similar to a film festival, like I said. We'll get into what you get for that later, because there is a membership structure where you get more than just, just a funding application. Um, but I was even saying earlier, you know, so there is a payment, which people go, oh, you've got to pay to apply, though. But in a public funded body, assuming you all pay tax, you, we, all, we all pay to apply. So it's a similar process, but you've got more control um, over your project, and we can allow you to have the finance and go and make your project, and like Mark said, not our version of your project, which for me is one of the reasons I set up Genera because, again, the horror stories, or not the horror stories, the stories of people making the project, and then you go, oh, amazing, oh, well, how was that? Well, we had to change this and cut that, and uh, yeah, it's fine, you know? And it's like, ah, making your short, albeit tricky and tough, should be exciting, it should be a fun experience, it should be something you're proud of, and not ending up with a product that you kind of, you go, eh, that's yeah, fine, it ended up being, you just wanted it done at the end, you know? That's, that's awful. Some people might relate to that, and so for me, it's like let's get rid of that. Let's just go and make, let people make the films they want to make. You know, look, I'm fully aware we can't fund everything because there's a physicality to it. You know, um, but we can do our little bit, and we can try with what we have. And like I say to people all the time, if you don't agree with any platforms, the way it works, don't do it. And it sounds really stupid, like really simple, sorry, but it's like a lot of people still um, facilitate. That, that to grow and happen, and they don't like it, they don't agree with it. And, um, you know, we're, we're the power, you know, we can control what happens. So if you don't like something, just don't be part of it, and then, and then get that, and then moan about what's happened. Do you see what I mean? It's like, let's create something different, you know? That's basically what I did with Jenner, and we, you know, we get filmmakers from like 165 countries on our, on our site. Like, there's a lot of people, it just shows you the need for this kind of thing. And like I said, we're not, the only one, you know, and by all means, everyone go and get money wherever you can. I think that's the other way Genera differs is we don't have a kind of if you've got money from any other body, that's that's great for us. That's not a, like a hindrance. That's not like oh, okay, that's brilliant. Like that means that you've got you've got more money to make your film. Whereas some other bodies will sort of oh, um, well, we need to be first on the credits and we need to do this and we need to have this control. I'm just like oh, yeah, no worries. Do you know what I mean? Like it doesn't matter to us because. Our job is to get the film made, and then whatever happens, that film's afterlife. Hopefully, it goes on and does really well. Whatever that means to the individual filmmaker, it's not about getting into 300 festivals or three. It's about what you've got from that experience, about what you feel about making that film. And for us, as soon as we've made a film, it's like brilliant job done. If it goes on and takes over, well, fantastic. But that's not really why we're doing it. We're not doing it to find the projects that could make us look better. I'm, not, I'm, re I'm really not interested in that. I'm interested in supporting people that don't have options. You know what I mean? Giving people an option to go and make a film another way. Just give it another option because we need it as filmmakers. We need other places we can raise money or people receive money from. So that is, and it's a grant, obviously. I think that needs to, that doesn't need to be outside. We don't like ask for the back. We definitely don't ask for the back. Not at all suggesting that filmmakers complain about people. Not at all, not at all, not at all, not at all. I don't mean that. We have to. And speaking of other options, crowdfunding. So, if you could tell us a bit about the process of Green it, should someone approach a company wanting to launch their own campaign? Oh, yes, for sure. So, we have a slight distinction from the other platforms in that, you know, basically you can chuck up anything you like on there. Um, but we have not necessarily call it a vetting process because we're agnostic when it comes to, to genre, um, largely to the experience of the filmmakers or the credits, you know, but we're not making value judgments on what people have done previously. We're a little shy of first timers because of complete first timers, I mean, because we've got to be confident for, for people that have backed a project that there's actually going to be something delivered that broadly looks like what we're talking about. Um, but as I say, you know, we, we are come on and come all open in that regard as long as you come correct, as long as you come prepared and ready to, to jump in with both feet into the program that the campaign is and, and what it involves and what it work. So the, the process, by and large, you come to our website, um, you need to... Okay. <laughs> Hello? 
<laughs> you, can, you can call this. <laughs> the back phone. Is it mine? Anyway. Uh, over there. We can, uh, so, so yeah, yeah. So the, it is on our website, greenlit.com. You will just register using the register button and verify your email address. And then you'll see another magic button will pop up which will allow you to submit a project. And at that point, we'll get you to put in just a brief description of what you want. We won't get too heavy, you know, you don't need to complete the full page. You can just put it, we will ask you a few select questions. Then that uh, wings its way to the inbox of our head of community, Michael Lee Gross, who's a satellite there in the front row. Um, and she'll set up a, an initial chat and we'll talk to you about you know, what your project is, what your plans are for delivery, and importantly, you know, do you realise the amount of work and do you realise what you're signing up to by doing crowdfunding? Because, you know, as I say, you're going to come to us. If you're not going into it fully committed, then it's a waste of everybody's time. It's a waste of your time and it's a waste of our time. So that's the kind of barrier of, of expectation we have. However, that's not supposed to put people off because if there are gaps in knowledge or gaps in experience when it comes to that kind of audience engagement or that manner of fundraising, we're going to do everything I can, everything we can in, with our resources to help you get over that hump. Um, you know, we've, we've got quite a lot of training materials. I'm just going to do a quick plug. We launched our educational initiative uh, just over a month ago, uh, and at the moment we're dropping an hour long lecture every fortnight about a different aspect of business, cultural, marketing um, for creatives in general um, and filmmakers specifically. So if you go to greenit.com slash u, there's a letter u, as in university, there's, there's a bunch of material that we're adding there every day. And I absolutely, please recommend, sorry, I'm allowed to go. Like, I wasn't going to come on to that, but you don't. Oh, sorry. Go. Okay. Um, next Wednesday, uh, our friend and associate, uh, Sierra Callahan, who is a filmmaker and a mega TikToker with half a million followers, will be talking about how to manage social media as a filmmaker and not just the old crowdfunding campaign but the full project as a whole. So that's that's a live stream six o'clock next Wednesday, and you can if you join us for it, you can ask questions afterwards, or it'll be on our YouTube channel. Um, did I answer the question? Right, I'm going to go for a bit. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. So, so we look, we look for passion, conviction, and the willingness to get the job done. Those are the qualifications we look for in a filmmaker, as opposed to, you know, like I say, who your parents are or what your parents are. Thank you very much. And just to make it clear to all of you, I was prepared. I was going to talk about that, not just because you brought it up. Um, I'm going to go give this right back to you and say so you've, you've talked about the class that's happening next Wednesday, but can you give us a quick? Um, overview about you know the thinking behind Green at you and what your plans are for it. Yeah, very definitely. I mean, it kind of touches upon what I said at the top of this talk about how you know many creative people lack business knowledge and, and business experience, and, and in many ways, you know, people are put off by it. So it's like marketing is is kind of a dirty word to to many creative people because you know you think of the stock market or whatever you think of you know as if it's, it's something impure, but in reality, it's all about talking to your audience, and, and a little knowledge goes goes a long way. So, you know, with a series of bits and pieces you can watch, that's, we, we just, you know, if you get a tiny bit of knowledge, you're already ahead of 90% of, of creative people in that regard. And that knowledge translates to power when you come to promoting what you do and make people aware and, and make people understand where you're coming from as a creative. So that's kind of the broad strategy. Um, we've got lots of also more specific things. So, so the first three sessions, so I did one on marketing, uh, our head of uh, communications, Phil, did one on branding uh, two weeks. They're both up on the YouTube channel. Uh, Sierra's doing more social media next. Um, coming up, we've also got Grace doing more about theatre. We haven't quite set the date for that yet. But I'm just telling you this for the first time. Um, Grace will be doing great some theatre background, so we'll be doing one specifically for theatre creatives. Uh, we also have sessions coming up on festival strategy, working practically with festivals, with, with the marvellous festival format, who Mark knows as well. Uh, we've got one on tax credits with our, our county partners, Alliance. So, so the idea is we, we, we're going to be dropping some, some truth bombs of a very useful nature. Um, over the coming weeks and then hopefully in the whole
that will, will give a, you know, a pretty good basis for things you might not necessarily have learned about at that point school. Was that a question? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that was a question. And um, so, yeah, that's an excellent kind of um, expansion on the, the funding opportunities that Greenlit already offer, and it's very similar to what's happened recently at, at Genera. So, it's not just the, the funding applications that we now accept, there's a whole other showcasing element to, to, to short ones, which is now becoming which Christians can tell us all about. Yes. So, basically, yeah, so we started off just doing funding as I've sort of blabbed on about. Um, and then the next thing, obviously, we listen to our audience is people. I guess we came to the cycle where the films we funded were now out in the world and going to festivals, and then our filmmakers were sort of saying, "Can we? Where do we? Can we put this somewhere? Do you know anywhere we can put this? You know, and you can start. It's like, okay, yeah, actually, once you've done the blood, sweat, and tears, and you've done the festival run, and you've been to all these lovely events like today, and met all your people and done that, what then happens to your film afterwards? You know, because it's taken you an X amount of time to make it and lots of hard work. You know, where, where can it sit to still serve you and work?" for you in that space so what we've now introduced is a showcasing platform on the site so we still have the funding as, as I've mentioned um, but we also have a space for filmmakers to come onto the platform upload their films and be seen by not just industry but other colleagues you know to crew up for your next uh, projects to meet other creatives we run networking events as well in person um, finally um, where you know people can actually get together um, but most importantly as well the, the industry because what we found is, um, generous as it's grown, what we've had is is people contact us asking for, have you had any brilliant horror writers? Have you had any directors come through your, you know, any films come through your door which are, you know, stand out to you? So what we've thought is right instead of kind of doing it behind the scenes, let's let's give a platform where people can showcase their work, where they can be seen by industry. A lot of money is spent on development of people trying to find the next big thing. Right, you know, and short films is a lot of people's way into this. So what we want to do is have a dedicated space where people can come and watch, and then contact you about your project um, through us, but with no connection to us, if that makes sense. It's just through our platform, so people can reach out and say, "Hey, Mark, I saw Squall. This is unbelievable. We've got something else we're working on now. We're interested in the call about, you know, about this." So, and, and that's what we want because after you've made it, then what? You know, like it doesn't just the journey doesn't end there. And you might want to make more shorts, or you might want to other projects. But the idea is you can then, as filmmakers, showcase your work. Um, so we have various different options. But the good news is there is a free option, which basically means you can upload your film for free. So if I'm assuming most of you have a film, jump on the site, upload your film, check it out, see see what it does for you. There's obviously other options and membership options that you can have that you might find benefit you. You can always you know upgrade to those. But the first thing is you can get on the platform and have a space to showcase your film. It's not going to sit getting dusty on a on a hard drive somewhere in your spare room. You know, it's actually going to work for you. And it could even be a project that you did five years ago and always thought it could have done with more exposure but didn't quite, for whatever reason, get that. Well, now you can stick it up there and share the links directly with people. You'll have people watching it um, on the site that then could lead, you know, obviously, we can't promise anything, but the reality is we're sh we're, that what we're doing is showing you a space that then industry can come to and colleagues and other filmmakers and interesting people can come and view your work and then contact you and hopefully lead to more work and help with your growth as filmmakers. So that's uh, that's the new general platform. So um, yeah, as I said, free top budget film and crit profile. So if you've got one, stick it up there, see what it does. Um, yeah, and I'm happy to chat all about it after everyone has got any questions. But it's pretty um, self-explanatory, I think. It's quite, we made it quite user-friendly, I hope. I mean, we're all proficient enough. It shouldn't be too tricky. If you can work my space, you can yeah. work this. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, no. um, so just to expand on some of what Chris was saying about, about the, the new part of the platform wearing um, my filmmaking hat, which obviously all of you also know too, I can see. Um, what's good about this showcasing platform is that it just offers a lot more to the film than just a web page for it to sit on. YouTube or Vimeo is great, and I'll sit there passively. If someone thinks to go and look at it, great, and that's kind of about it. One of the things that really excites me about what we're doing here is making sure that some of the films that um, have outstanding elements to them are being put in front of the eyes of people in the audience that should be 
the industry, sorry, that should be seeing them. So for example, shorts that have like an outstanding performance, we're sending them to casting directors. We're asking casting directors what are the brief shot looking for at the minute, and then we look at the films on our platform and send them, go, okay, we have films with this character, that, with this performance that you're looking for for this, and we already have um, uh, relationships in place with, with a number of casting directors, and it's already showing fruit, um, which for me is particularly exciting because it's nice to see that a short film can be somewhere, but still be, you know, still has a bit of life in it. It's still being put forward to so people to try and find a bit more from it. Um, it's also a great way to connect to, to other filmmakers. As Christian said, we have uh, in-person networking events, one this evening, as it happens. So if you all want something to do something later, let us know. Um, and uh, talking a bit more about how to connect as well. So um, just to expand on what Christian said about th through us, but not by us, the way, the way it works is that each film has its own profile page where you can list the casting crew. And um, you can input email addresses for the casting crew, should they be happy for you to do so. But if that, well, that's on the back end. You know, there'll be a contact me button next to that person. If you press that, a message window opens up. You can write the message you'd like to, and then that person you want to message gets an email from us saying you had a message from this person with this message, and this is their email, and it's entirely up to you if you want to reply to them. So it's not giving out your information to, to, to anyone who just happens across the site. It's all completely up to you whether or not anybody. Um, so between that and connecting our members as we are this evening and have done previously, and it's just brilliant. It's just brilliant meeting new filmmakers, isn't it? I hope you'll talk to each other a little bit after this, but I know I've missed it because I've missed all of that. Um, and again, with the film you have on, it genuinely excites me what can be done with the platform, which is why I'm actually fairly recently, last, last summer, a year at no, yeah, just, just, just joined, uh, specifically to kind of focus on, on this area of the company. So um, all of that is incredibly exciting to us, and I hope you guys have a chance to check out the platform and look at it yourself. It will look equally uh, enticing to you as well, but um, uh, I think it's great. I'm mildly biased, but I do think it's great. Um, so what I would like to ask next of each of you, actually, is um, why do you do what you do? Oh, goodness me. Um, I mean, I could point to a period in about 2015 where I was turned down for jobs everybody and I've my thumb. So there's one pragmatic reason. But the why is, you know, I, I'm, I like to think of myself as a bit of a Renaissance man. And I like science and I like business. Um, but more than anything, I like creativity. I come from an acting background, I come from a filmmaking background, I'm a musician. And I thrive on hanging out and, and doing stuff with, with creative people. You know, when I first had to put the biggest plan for bringing it together, and I was speaking to a lot of creative people and saying, you know, how can we help and what's missing? And it took me back to my, you know, my days of being part of the film crew, which is like being in a band, being in a group, so we all come together and play the game and play the gig, specifically make the film, and it's it's thrilling, and I, I love that dynamic. I didn't know what instrument you played? Uh, bass. And what was the name of your band? Uh, well, I was in several bands. I was in the Folk Devils, I was in the Rack and Unity. Uh, Folk Devils wins. That's very good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and on to you, you had, well, let's start to think about it while we were yeah, about Folk Devils. Why do you do what you do? Uh, it's a good question. I think I, I'm a producer myself. I have a couple of different companies. Jenna has always been a passion, a sort of passion of mine that that I wanted to solve. I'm a natural problem solver and I don't like when things don't feel right and I try and come up with another solution. I think that's really who I am as a person. And Jenna excited me because everyone told me not to do it. So basically, when everyone tells me not to do something, I'm like that kid, can you imagine? I'm just like, well, then this sounds great. So I sort of battled my lawyers where they told me I was absolutely insane to set up something where I'm just sort of handing out money to people. And um, it was at that moment, moment I sort of knew that Jenna has to happen because if it's that nuts, then, and it is when you think that, we've sort of, obviously now we're a bigger platform, but can you imagine like when we first set up as a film funding company that had never funded a film, and we're asking people to come onto the platform and, and pay for a fund that, does, that technically doesn't exist. Like, it's absolutely insane. Um, but the, the sort of influx of people just proved that this is what we need to, like, something like this needs to happen. Um, so I guess I'm, uh, I, I, if people say I can't do something, then I can't just try and do it. And that's what everyone said about Jenna, and I didn't like that because I thought there's got to be another way, and I'd rather try it than it done it. And 
it goes wrong and I, I've tried to do something to try and sort of help and you know so hopefully everyone that's come through the door so far has, has got benefit from it and we're still here four years later and we're kind of better than ever so it's proved that, that it has worked but um, I, um, I jumped and I, I jumped with this and um, here we are today. I said, I'm, I'm, I shouldn't do what I do. But just do it because I've done it and there's a lot of people that like to talk about stuff and the thing is, is unless you jump and do it and then figure out what happens, like I'm a jump and figure it out, like loads of things, I've failed at loads of stuff, like loads of stuff, I've shut loads of different companies, like lots of stuff's happened but ultimately I think unless you go and do it, it's very difficult, I think everyone was telling me to stop moaning, I think really that's what happened in general, everyone, I was moaning about the funding opportunities and then they said, well, what would you do? Well, um, with all that being said, I'm not sure if you think there is something in particular that we haven't touched on that is going to work out. He does, he does. Actually, I just want to kind of wanted to expand on why you do it. I, just want to on it. I think part of it is I've always felt like a bit of an awful and a bit of a theatre geek, and I never felt part of a cool kids that were going to run as well. You see, or in a fight, through those kind of schemes. And I guess that is part of the I think now that we have covered most things, I'd like to open up to, to the floor if anybody has any questions and um, encourage you not to be at all embarrassed to do so. We want to hear some questions, so does anybody have one? Yes, yes, who, who do you have a question for? Um, hi, well, my name is Cassandra, um, filmmaker and jeweler. Um, I just did a quick like format review looking at both of your sites, seeing which ones get funded, and just obvious, sorry to make, not, not, not sorry. It's like I'm a black woman and I'm looking like there's not much diverse people on there or, or if there are diverse stories on there that are written by white people and is that a barrier? I'm asking this because I really want to get the money and sometimes if people don't see representation or if they don't identify with a certain subject we're more likely not to get funding. So the ones that usually get funding is like anything to do with feminism or white feminism, comedy, history and nostalgia, common age or anything to do with lockdown. Those ones seem to get funding so I don't do any of those habits. I just want to talk about families and talk about um, women um, in their houses and in their front room, talk about heritage. So I just want to know, is it a work? I'm just saying, how can you strategically get funding without compromising what you want to make? Because there's no point putting all that in and the people who lose your audience, your customers, are not going to want to fund it because it doesn't look like anything else on your platforms. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, well. First off, I think I'll say both companies have very different sort of um, initial stages and how they receive projects and whatever. So I think first of all, we'll, we'll let you answer with the way that the application process works in general. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. Um, I uh, I believe it is quite a diverse um, group, and I'm happy to we can go through that later. But the way Genera works deliberately is all the readers of Genera have absolutely no idea about the project itself. That's all kept in house. So everything that goes out in terms of coming back for feedback, have no information on the film. They don't even know who wrote the script. It's all based off, off script. So we actually don't have any diversity forms or any information on that side with general. And I'll, I'll tell you now the reason why um, I did this. It's deliberate. I, I heard a story just before I set up general where I think it was the National um, Opera, I believe it was, the opera, it was one of the operas, that were trying to get more um, women into the opera. So what they decided to do was shut the curtains and have you know, the, the panel there and people would come on, they'd play their instrument and then they would fund them purely based off the, off the music and the talent, not based off whether they're female or men. And there were still more men being funded and they realised it's because not all but a lot of women wear heels. So when they were coming on the stage, subliminally they're hearing a heel and still there's that sort of conscious bias. So what they decided to do is everyone had to take their shoes off, so they all walked on stage with bare feet, so no one, you're literally judging it off the music and nothing else, you don't know anything about this individual. And for me, the, the way to be truly um, uh, representative and open is to not know anything. The more you know, the more you can make a conscious decision on that individual, that project. Now, admittedly, you, you, we, we could say that there are some projects that are clearly cultural or that you, you, could, you would imagine, right, that, that you could say that. 
but we, what we can do is only fit, be as sort of open to anyone as possible, and then base it purely off the, the, the script and the project, and not off all the external things that often do complicate. So I, I recognize your question, and, and I recognize the, 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 the issues when you're looking at platforms and seeing whether it's gonna work. But what we try to do here is be is know nothing. You know, the thing is with general, we're a new wave company. We're not systemically um, racist or homophobic or sexist, which which other which other organisations are, and they have to then prove that they're not. We're not that. We don't have to do anything. We can do exactly what we want. So we make it as open to anyone as possible. And for my eyes, there's there's less of that barrier because we don't have that information to be able to decide based on anything. Uh, exterior. Does that make sense? All I heard is a good, a good rebuttal and, and, a, and a defense. I wasn't accusing any racism or anything. No, 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 I know you weren't. I know you weren't. Okay. I, I was simply just trying to um, give you the, the sort of behind the scenes. It's just looking on your scenes. website. So maybe I'm not understanding your website. So when I go sure. on your website yeah. and I'm seeing pro people who pay and yeah. people who you funded, and I'm yeah. just looking on the aesthetics, yeah. that's what I'm going on. Sure. So if I'm talking about, I don't know, black women in South London, obviously more likely they're going to put a black woman on the poster. So that affects who might want to fund it, and I can't, you can't, I can't get away from it, or even a name, if someone's from an African heritage, I can't get away from it. So those type of things, even though you guys are very open and democratic, if your audience, you know, they're just like white indie films, why, I just want to check, like, is, is there any point? Because I'm just learning, like, people say they're open, but if, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, well, I think in terms of our process, I guess that's all I can tell you yeah. about, you know, at this stage is that our process is that there is not that, uh, that there isn't that information to then make a conscious or unconscious decision on because there isn't that information available. Mm -hmm. And I stress back to the you know the audition process that for me, if you take away all that and you fully uh, and you solely focus on the, the content, the project, and the rest is is the rest then you can actually truly be as diverse as possible. So when we go to find a project, we're not looking at how many, making sure we've made sure we tick boxes. If it's that, then it's that. If it's that, then it's, it's whatever comes through our doors in that, in that sort of round. We're not trying to then make it work for everybody. We are literally finding what comes through our doors. But, yeah, go on. I just, oh. I just, I just want to make clear to everyone, I'm not looking for handout. If, if the project is good, the project is good. Sure. But the thing is, just looking at some research, looking at how people black funder um, for films, mm. it just shows uh, under-representation, mm. and also people might not see it marketable, so wider yeah. audience, so that's what I'm trying to highlight. If it's if my stories I will tell is not marketable to your audiences, you think you're not going to make much profit because it's a very small section, is it still worth me doing it? I just want to save hours of disappointment if there's no point doing it. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, we'll probably get into this cool. at the bar in a bit, but... I just have that, to be honest, guys. Yeah, yeah, I've been looking. Yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been researching. But is, is that the platform itself lends itself to anyone that wants to share their story on the platform? Do you see what I'm saying? So anyone that wants to put content up, we, we don't have a barrier for, for anybody to put up content onto our platform. We want to see everything. Um, and like I said, hopefully I've tried to explain the way we find stuff and whether or not you're seeing it in the five minutes you've, you've had a look at it. But I'm happy to sit and talk to you about everything we have. But what I'm saying is it's not, there's no conscious decision in what we do. And I think that's really important for our company. That is just about what we're getting through the doors and basically purely on the talent and the structure of the, of the film that we think we can support. Cool. How yeah. do you talk later about yeah, cool. how things can be seen included yeah, or excluded from someone's point of view? Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. Thank you very much. Just to, to echo something you said there about, about audiences, I think it's probably relatively fair to say that General Search doesn't have a particular audience. It's more no. geared around what the filmmakers that would want to be part of the platform and how we can other it's not so much a consumer audience and what like there's a certain demographic and certain stories we think people want to see on the site it's not really coming from that angle it's more just from the filmmaker side and trying to connect them together so we don't really have an audience as such so far i don't know if that's any help but that's that just, just occurred to me when, when you mentioned that as well and uh, yeah peter over to you yeah so i think i think that's very interesting what you're saying and, and how you perceive that and feel that and our approach is is you know we're kind of audience agnostic and by that I mean we don't really have an audience group because it doesn't have an audience about community and we have a bunch of filmmakers and people that we work with and know and we bounce stuff around and people are hard and become a friend. But we don't know your audience, okay? But what we'll try and do is for 
facilitate you finding out your audience and connecting with them if that starts to make sense. And, and you, in that, that's kind of articulating what we are because, because you know, you may have a strong idea and you, you know, mentioned Black Women in Richard South London, um, you know, you're not going to get somebody necessarily at the BBC who's going to go, oh yeah, yeah, and understands it because they don't get it, they don't, they don't know it's there, you know, and being agnostic and, and being, um, you know, not recognising the existence of that audience, that's, that's not good enough. So if you were to come across and say, okay, um, this is, these are the steps you take to, to mobilise and grow an audience. So a very, very, almost, almost perfect example, even though it's a black male filmmaker, the examples, and we bring the filmmaker, a uh, guy called Alex Kaye, and we actually like getting on panels with us because he's done such an amazing job. And he did a film with us last year, and it's in the can, and uh, can't really the moment, but it's called Ballad of Oliver Morris. And anyone who lives in South London knows that Oliver Morris is the housing office for Lambert Council. But what people don't know it was it was named after you know, a, a, a family of the British Black Panther. An activist and, and a, a fierce proponent of, of civil rights, and Alex basically didn't know much about the audience when, when we started talking about it. But he put the record, put the ref, and really engaged with the Brixton community on a very local level. So he was, you know, he was talking to bloggers, he was talking to DJs in clubs, he was talking. He would literally sit in a cafe from morning till till tea time and talk to people and say, you know, this is a local story, this is one of the really you know, black man story, and, and people went back for it. And he, he raised uh, a little under 16,000 um, pounds with the real expectations. So I guess, I guess the point I'm making is, we can't find your audience for you, but we're going to be right behind you, and we're going to do everything you can to find your audience. And also, I don't want to be previous in announcing it, but we've got a massive project coming up, um, based, in, based in America, uh, with a filmmaker called Rain Pryor, uh, Richard Pryor's daughter, um, and that is coming up, and that is, uh, again, a, uh, it's, it's got its basis in African spirituality, so that's not an audience I know a great deal about, but we're learning and we're trying to facilitate and, and get you know, Rain and the filmmaking team, very experienced filmmaking team, on it, get them to understand where that audience comes from. So, does that go any way to... No, it's helpful, no, I'm, just, I'm not here to... Um, I know it can be on home to home conversation, but it's 2022. It's, it's not here to put you guys on the spot. No, 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 no. I'm just trying to minimise and be in safe spaces because I've just come up to places where, yeah, it's a great idea, but it's not marketable, and that is the that is kind of the rhetoric. So I, I'm not saying that that's what you want. I'm not trying to uh, say anything about your company. But it just, it's just, I just want to make sure that, um, is it... Is there alignment? That's what I'm trying to do. It's, it's, it's entirely possible. And, mm. you know, we, we won't do it for We don't do crowdfunding. This is a common misnomer that the platforms have more impact than they actually are. Um, something like only 5% of the pledges that go through Kickstarter come via the site or the mail apps or the site. I think 95% comes from the promotional activities of the themselves. And that was learning that statistic. And, yeah, okay, I, I can set up something. Because if we can empower the filmmakers themselves, 10%, then we're ahead of the game. So, so that's, that's where we're kind of coming from. So if you've got something that's been wonderful, come to us and we'll try and give you a few tools to go and find that that you to feel yourself rather than do you feel good because that's not something you can even think to do. Okay. So it's like if you increase your social capital on your like as a filmmaker, so you know like um, like having a book, right? So you should keep the start with big book deals. So if you have a large audience, yes, more likely you're going to get your, your film. And there are tools and techniques, and there are ways to go about that. But it is hard work. But we try and help people. And, and, and just on that, with general platform, that is the idea, is you have a space to put it, because you've made this film, and what are you going to do? Email lots of people and hope they watch it. The idea being that you already have an audience of filmmakers and uh, external, and, and just film lovers, you know, that want to come on the platform and watch it, and then provide you a space to upload your film. You're not then searching, I mean, you still do all the other avenues, but you have now a, a home that you can use as a base to share your content. So,
I think, I think to, to, to sum it up, you know, I think we disagree is that both platforms, in a sense, are tools in which to make films without any agenda other than to make films. Yeah. Mm. There, there is, there's no, no one being catered for, it's just the tools are here. Just What's exactly. done with them exactly. is entirely up to the film. Yeah. 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 But thank you very much, and you're absolutely right, it's absolutely a discussion worth having. Um, anyone else have a question they might ask? Yes, sir. So, for, um, when you receive a project and idea, how does it, who chooses from, or is it like a group of a diverse group of people from different backgrounds, or just like, you are like, pretty old? Like, no, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, so just, just in case anybody didn't hear the question was who chooses the project as they come in, so they go through the application, who decides which goes, which goes forward? Yeah, so, no, it's, it's definitely not me. In fact, it's not me at all, so, um, <laughs> because I get a lot of people like to tell me their films all the time, and I'm like, hey, this sounds great, but, um, um, yeah, no, I have a panel of people, basically, yeah, all, all around the world, all different um, backgrounds, but also all different levels of experience, so I've got some people that are sort of very in or just coming out of film schools, and I've got, also got people that are very experienced filmmakers themselves, and they can come from also the commercial side, the documentary side, you know, all, covering all bases. So, um, yes, we do that out, and then it comes back to us, if that makes sense. So everything goes out and comes back in, uh, by, yeah, a, a, a large group of filmmakers. I don't, so a lot of people put the names of people on the sites. Um, I don't, because what, what I found from other people is, then everyone finds them and then messages them on like LinkedIn or whatever they can, and then they come back to you and go, I don't really want to do, do this, you know, because it's not like a big paid gig for them, do you know what I mean? They're, they're, they're looking for the project, so I don't tend to sort of publicly say who that is because then I find that people then don't necessarily want to start looking for projects, but yes, it's, no, it's not me. Um, <laughs> and Peter? How do, you, how do you decide to take on a project from now? I'm expressing uh, Grace will be our ferocious, our ferocious uh, <laughs> guardian and she will make sure that you've got your things in order. Sorry, could you speak up? Could you speak up? Oh off? yeah, I'm sorry. Thank yeah, you. Sorry. I'm not holding the mic. Yes, uh, as I say, the criteria, we don't judge on genre or audience or people. But we do expect you to tick certain boxes in your preparation for launching a campaign. Uh, and so once you've persuaded Grace that you don't have to put the first set of boxes, we will allow you to launch your campaign privately, um, which means it's, people can make pledges, but you can't see it on the homepage of the site and you can't find it by Google. The idea being that if you are correctly prepared to launch your crowdfunding campaign, and you can get 10% of your pledges in before it before you go public. You can get 10% in through private solicitations and talk to people you know. And once you hit that 10% mark, that's when we take things public with the public. Does that make sense? It's a slightly different approach to other crowdfunding platforms, but there's a lot of significance in getting like a bit of a launching with a bit of a splash and launching to the public with a good number of pledges. So that process indicates that you are prepared for, for the promotion and the marketing and the community efforts that are involved in doing the campaign successfully. Does that answer? Is that correct? Yeah. Cool. So I think it's more like, um, you, you keep saying a we, so we is you and like a panel of people, like... Uh, so yeah. I'll talk, I mean, I'm talking about us as, as a company, I mean, there's this one. Okay, that's not us, but... Yeah. Yeah. Is that... There's, yeah, not like, there's not like a panel of judges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just me. <laughs> yeah. So everybody hound grey. So <laughs> yeah. um, any other questions we can have with? Yes, sir. Um, uh, directly more about genera, but um, I've seen on the site in the past that you can ask for either a full amount of the funding that you need for the film, or perhaps you can uh, maybe ask for a part amount. Um, this is a bit of a detailed question, but I guess it's quite good to know if there's actually kind of a preference in terms of do you have a better chance if you're asking for, you know, less, let's say that's a couple grand, mm -hmm. versus, oh, it's actually the 10 grand you need for the full funding. So again, just to, re to repeat the question for anyone who didn't hear it, um, when applying for funding in general, you can apply for pots up to £5,000, but it doesn't have to be the full £5,000. So the question was, is, is there any advantage into asking for a lower amount when applying for what you need for your project? Um, it depends on the project. And what I mean by that is, um, 
if you're just applying because you think, I'll just go for five grand and I'll, I'll make up the reasons why I can spend five grand, that, that, but you've already raised some somewhere and you only need a couple of thousand, um, uh, really that question is there, the reason that you ask, there's not a preference, first of all, it's not like if you go for five or if you go for one, you're more likely to get the other, it's really about the project. If you've, ra if you've got a 60 grand short film and you've raised 50 quid and you want five grand, that might prove quite difficult for us because we're wondering where that's coming from. But then if you've um, got all the money and then you go, I need five grand for um, my festival submissions, you know, then you might be like, okay, maybe you do. Let's see how you're breaking that down. Because again, we have a duty of care that when we give up, we want it to go and be used as best as possible to support that project. And if that indeed shows that it's a very deep, and it's, it, there is a reason to spend that, then happy days. But if it's just because I might as well get five, and if I get five, then great, um, you know, which happens. Uh, but there's no legitimate reason for that, then then it's an issue. Does that make sense? So it's, it's not like oh, if I only I'll just put two, and I'll probably be I'll get into a, a category that fits two. No. Um, it's more about, is that right for your project? Like, if you genuinely have been like, oh, sound design, oh, colour grade, oh, we didn't budget for, or whatever, or we've run out of money, we need 1,500 quid to complete that, and that is your film then completed, say, and that's what you need, then great, you know, sort of, stuff like that. So you can apply it on the basis of post-production, not just from, you just scripts. Yeah, you can apply at any stage, so like from development all the way through to film festival run, you know, because again, we, we find a lot of them, which you've got to make the film, and then you're like, oh, God, film festival costs like a fortune, you know, to, to get that run, to actually get the exposure. We can then also support project in that stage. Um, so, it, again, if you can, if there's an understanding of what that money is for, and not just, I'll go for five and if I get it for two days, then that's, that's the advice, is know what you're asking for, for what. Um, yeah. Yes, madam. Hi, two things. When's the next deadline for short funding? And secondly, do you have to have a producer to put in an app a funding application form, uh, you know, ca can the budget be a rough budget, which is what I'm doing yeah. at the well, moment. Well, the good news is we've just we've just closed the round. We're in the middle of actually shortlisting currently, so uh, the next one is now not for I think it's now six months is the next one. So you, you've got plenty of time to get your project ready. What I said before, I'm not sure if you were at the back. Um, I've only just come in. Oh, that's cool. No worries. So um, what I said before is when when you apply for the fund, you actually have. The whole, say you apply today, yep. um, you have the remainder of that round to then update your project. So say, uh, I know you mentioned if you don't have a producer, say yes. this stage you, you don't, but you'd like to start the application, have it being sat in your profile. As, as you move forward, to say in a few months you do build your team, you do build a bit more momentum, you can update your project before the close of the round. But, um, but, 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 but the do answer you is... You don't need a producer to get funding from you. Well, we... You don't necessarily need a producer, but we then need to know how the film was being controlled and being made, because we like to know that the money we give well, you... Of course, the budget. Yeah. Is that, uh, the budget's in Yeah, place. as long as it's feasible yeah. and you're going you're gonna to deliver a short film, yeah. then we're happy. Okay, so six months' time is the next yes, deadline. Thank you. Okay, okay any final questions for anyone they'd like to ask us? If you don't want to ask publicly, I know I don't want to do no. I'm so sorry. So six months' time, that's October. Does that mean the money, the, the, the decisions get made in October yeah. for the money? So as soon as the round closes, so for example, this round closed on the 1st, and whenever we close a round, 10 days after, so on the 10th, the shortlisting goes out, and seven days after that, the projects that we fund are allocated. It's always 10 7. Great. You think, from the end of the round. And then the money will be delivered and then the 17 delivered. days later. The, the money is then delivered depending on your project. So yeah. if you're then shooting a project in, in a year's time, then the money is reimbursed and given to you then. If you're actively in production, then the money will go to you um, there and then. I mean, it can be with you as quick as uh, two days. And thank you for what you're doing, by the way. No worries. Thank you very much for all your questions. As I said, um, if anyone has any other questions they'd like to ask us, we're going to be in the bar near the taps um, till about <laughs> uh, five o'clock this evening. So feel free to come and ask us any questions you'd like. Uh, on behalf of all of us up here, thank you very much for giving us your time this afternoon and best of luck with everything you're making.